Mayor, good afternoon. How are you? Hi, good Scott. Evening. I'm great. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. Traders, welcome to the mentoring session with the Mayor. Just uh, gave the final word in the main trading room, and uh, it looks like we've got a pretty full house, Mayor, so um, you can begin on time. And uh, appreciate all of you, all you guys taking the time to be with us this afternoon for the mentoring session. Mayor, I'll talk to you uh, later today or tomorrow. Okay, great. Good. Okay, traders, good to see you here. Um, some of you asked um, about uh, monitor setup, and I would like to discuss this today. And of course, we have an open discussion. Therefore, you could uh, ask whatever question you like to ask. But I'll start with my monitor setup because this is something that uh, some of you wanted to know a little bit more in details. So let's start with that and see wherever that takes us. So, yeah, you can ask there, absolutely. You can just write down your questions. Let's talk first about, let's see first um, questions, hopefully questions about uh, monitor setup, and then we will take it from there. So right now, let's concentrate on that and then just prepare your questions, whatever things you think we should be discussing. Okay, so let's start this uh, mentoring session with um, monitor setup and this is in fact the exact room where I'm sitting right now. So as you can see here, that's my monitor setup. I, well, is, uh, hold on a second, let me use my pointer now. Okay, so that's my trading room. And in fact, I don't anymore use these two screens on the right side. So these are the ones I don't, I no longer use. I am concentrating on these four screens over here. And this is one of my trading platforms. I use two trading platforms with two different computers. So these four monitors over here are being used with one computer, which you can see it right down there. And there's another laptop here and another uh, screen right there, which are connected. So that is in fact my second computer and my second trading platform. Now, in order to have, of course, two computers, then you need two different computers, then you need two trading platform. That platform, that's the one I'm using for my swing trading. But I'm also following stocks, as you can see on this uh, uh, screen over here. That's where I am, uh, and I'll get into more details very soon. This is where I am, in effect, watching different type of stocks. And if you take a look at uh, these four monitors, these are the main monitors where I'm trading at. Um, okay, so let's start and get into more details. And let's just map the numbers of uh, the screens that I'm using. So these are, again, my main four monitors. Let's call them one, two, three, four, and then five, six. And we stop there because I no longer use seven and eight. Used to, I found out I, it's not useful for me anymore. So let's start with one, two, three, and four, discuss that, and uh, see exactly if you have any questions that is related to that, then that's, of course, going to be fine. Now, I'm, I'm just taking you back something like uh, 16 or 17 years ago when and I started trading, I had absolutely no idea how to set up my monitors. Really, I had absolutely no clue what I'm supposed to be having, what I'm supposed to be watching, and why. And the first time I flew to my uh, mentor in the United States, in Phoenix, Arizona, you know, Chris, you met him in the room. Then the, the first thing that struck me when I came to his home is his monitor setup. So that, that looked... Uh, so, like something that uh, um, is totally new for me. And I really, really wanted to know, and this is where I started, in fact, understanding why. Why he wants to look at this? Why he wants to look at that? Why is the reason he's having the S&P here or the NASDAQ there? And how he's using his training platform in order to set it up on the different monitors? And that was a very important far part in my education. 
because before that, almost a year, I had no clue how to set up my monitors. And this is certainly not a way that you guys should begin. You absolutely need to know exactly how to set up your monitors. It is very, very important for trading. It is something that each and every trader has to set up his own style of uh, charts setup. And this is something that uh, I can start by showing you how I do that. But in fact, you have to know, you have to set it up in a way that is more useful for you and more helpful for you. And it depends also on your trading styles or on trading systems, what kind of stocks you're looking for. How do you want to watch, watch them? You want to watch them like in one minute candle, five minute candle, 15 minute candle. Are you a swing trader also, just a day trader and so on? So you need to know how to set up your monitors. Very, very important. Let's get into details now. On um, These are my four monitors. So in fact, uh, if you take a good look here, uh, that's my left top monitor. That is my right monitor, my bottom left hand, and that would be my right left, my my right hand uh, bottom monitor. So again, that would be one to four. And let's again get into details. So monitor one, as you can see here, only two charts. On the top, that's the S&P 500. That's the S&P 500 in five minute candles. Very very important. Why? Because. Institutional traders only watch five minute candles. Now we went through this in different, uh, um, we, we talked about it plenty of times about the fact that we were watching the institutional traders trading and the fact that they're only allowed to sort of allowed to, to buy only when the S&P 500 is moving up. Therefore you can see the reflection on the stocks that we're trading. Very, very important. They are only watching the S&P intraday in five minute candles therefore if you're going to watch the intraday five uh, s&p 500 in i don't know 15 minute candles or two minute candles or one minute candle doesn't help you much because you'll be making different decisions than what the institutional traders are making and since they are 80 percent of the money and we are less then it's very very important for us to watch what they are uh, watching and to understand what they are understanding very, very important, and therefore I have the S&P 500 in five minute candles over here, all over here. Now, as you can see here, I have one, two, three, four, five days. When I watch five days in five minute candles, that's why I need the whole monitor for that. When I watch five days in five minute candles, then I can see, for example, very clearly that here we have a gap, and it is very, very likely in the next few days that the gap will be closed, therefore market will come down. And again, I'm not getting into explaining why this happens right now, because we learned that, or we we will learn it in, in some of our courses, maybe in the Star Trader course. But at least when I take a good look at the last five days, I really have a good understanding of where the market is coming from and when the market, where the market is really going to. So it is very, very important to see the market clearly in five minute candles, not just one day or one and a half day like most traders do, but much more than that. If I want to see more information, I would move to 15 minute candles and then I'll get 10 or even 13, up to 13, I believe, days that I can see on 30 minute candles. On the bottom, that's just the Nasdaq. So again, five minute candles, last five days, and a lot of details about uh, the Nasdaq. That would be the queues, QQQ, and again, watching the queues and comparing it all the time to the S&P 500. It is very, very important because sometimes the queues are like my crystal ball telling me what may happen for in the S&P 500. So again, first monitor, as you can see, is probably my most important monitor. That's the one I'm always watching because the stock I will be trading will move according to the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Therefore, I should be watching that and just two charts on one monitor, one quarter of my monitors is dedicated. And this is amazing just to two charts, OK? 
okay now again this is how i like to trade it's not necessarily something that is right for you you need to decide exactly what is right for you but i highly recommend that you will provide a good space for the s p 500 and the nasdaq whatever system you're trading these two charts are very 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 important monitor two i'm watching stocks different stocks will occupy these charts over here okay right over here but the left four i'm not touching so that would be the semiconductors that is apple that's the twin that's the biotech by the way both symbols changed uh, since i took this picture it doesn't matter really but i'll be watching main indices here and i'll be watching the twin and apple why because apple gives me a clue about what not institutional traders are doing but in fact what the private traders are doing because they are a lot of them are trading apple so apple gives me some kind of clue of what's happening in the market in fact from the point of view of just regular fox by the way when i'm talking about regular traders i'm most of them are not professional so the professional part uh, is very very low therefore in order to understand how the professionals are, are, are working, it's almost impossible. But if you take a look at how Apple works, how Apple behaves, it gives you a good clue about the general public opinion. Let's call it that way. And again, I'm not talking about traders, but they move the market as well. The fact is, is there are only 20%. So 80% would be the institutions, as I mentioned earlier, 20% general public. Among them, very small part are traders like us. Coming down to the twin, and again, uh, the twin is a very, very important indicator. It tells us how much volume comes in stocks from the New York Stock Exchange that are trending higher or lower. And again, I'm not going to get into this explanation right now. We're not learning how to use the twin right now. We do that in the Star Trader course, for example. But the twin is an important indicator which I use all the time. Uh, trade uh, uh, the NBI, again, it's no longer the biotechs, I believe. Don't use it for quite a long time, but it's a, it's a biotech indicator. And that's the semiconductors indicator, okay? So I'm watching some, I mean, many of my stocks would be related to semiconductors. Some of them will be related to biotech. Therefore, when you trade a biotech related stock, you want to see what the biotech uh, indicator is showing you. And again, depends on your strategies as well. Monitor three, that's um, the one on my left bottom. That would be my main monitor, my main monitor. So that will occupy a stock box over here and by the way you can see that's the level two it's i should tip, i should in fact change my pictures a little bit but this level two does not as you you can see any data right now because it, this picture was taken when uh there was no trading actually as you can see here from the time it was after trading hours or something like that so that would be the stock box level two another stock box and level two and these are all connected i mean not all this stock box is connected to the time and sale here which shows me about every transaction that is being made in the same stock symbol that you can see here so i would use this stock symbol i don't know to display apple for example then i would see the time and sale here then i would see the chart here so again the stock sim the stock box the time and sale and the chart, they will be all interconnected. Meaning if I'll change one of them, the rest will change too. The rest will change too. So this is like a trading station for me. I will be looking for a good opportunity here because this is a very clear and wide chart. I may change it to daily just to watch where the stock's coming from, weekly, and then I'll be trading it intraday, five minutes, one minute, depending on my strategy at that time. And then I'll be shorting, longing, whatever, from the stock box right over here. Now, this would be exactly the same. 
So it's another stock box, another time and sale, and another chart. So this is also connected. If I'm trading one, I could trade, I could easily trade two in that way. And maybe I'm just following something, trading this one, took a partial, whatever. But this is a quite a lot of space that I can use just to trade one stock, get a very good and clear idea about what this chart is doing very clearly. Uh, see the level two in life, the time and sale and everything, a very important uh, tool for me for intraday trading. Yes, a question. Oh, excuse me, PC is on. Oh, is it just... The PC is turned on, screens are turned on all the time. Yes, I don't turn it off. Of course, you know, the I do turn off the platform when I stop trading, but uh, no, I don't turn off my computer. Okay, so monitor four will be the one on the right uh, bottom, and that will be the same. Oh, excuse me, let me go back to monitor three. As you can see here, I have my uh, top 20 over here, very important. You know, it's a very important tool for me. That's where my, that's, that's in fact my intraday screener. Every stock this is gapping up or down or moving up or moving down, big movers, uh, they will all be here. And this will be connected to this chart, meaning if I'm going to click a stock that is screened over here, it's immediately going to show over there. And that is my, over here, that's my watch list. And whatever stocks I'm inputting in, in, in these columns over there, again, if I'm going to click them, you're going to see them popping up on the chart, time and sale, and, and stock box. On the one on the right-hand side, on the bottom, you will see the same. So again, I have a stock box, time and sale, and a chart, but you don't see the uh, top 20 or the, or the uh, stock sum, the, the watch list or whatever. So again, a stock box, time and sale, and chart. Now, all together, as you can see, I have four different stock boxes and charts. So this is like a trading set for me. And it's very, very important in my strategy to follow four different stocks very clearly, full charts, changing in between intraday, daily, and weekly, being able to see the level two and trading them. So all of the time I would, even if I'm trading just one stock, I would still be looking for more opportunities on different charts. And this is how I'm in fact watching closely four different stocks. And you know what? Sometimes it's not enough. Now, I, 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 I am aware that uh, most of you guys do not work with, uh, with um, uh, four monitors. I would uh, definitely suggest that uh, you consider that. I remember when I started trading, uh, it was... Uh, it was it, it was very expensive to buy a computer with four monitors, but right now really, uh, it's quite easy, quite simple, quite simple. And hold on a second. Okay. Here's a question: How many monitors monitors are you using? Please click the answer. I want to see. exactly what am I dealing with here? So it looks like only a few are using one monitor. I hope still in demo. <laughs> We've got uh, the majority using uh, two monitors, which is kind of okay, kind of okay. And then we got 23% uh, of you are using three, and we've got 20% using four or more, which is great. Oh, you can see the results, really? You should be seeing that, don't you? You can now. Okay, good. Oh, I, I, I stopped really using the projector, Ron. I do use it sometimes. I'm, I, I used to use, I used to display, I, I used to have a C, CBNC or Bloomberg or something, just television, really. Used to see that, stopped using that, just was 
too much noise and certainly when I'm in trading room doesn't work out well but uh, originally yes I was using it for watching television okay so it's a very interesting um, it's a very interesting result here I was in fact uh, expecting to see more people using uh, less than two in fact just one monitor that's, that's good that's good I'm encouraged okay guys if, if you're using just one you definitely must move to two or more if you are looking to become professional you need to consider using more than two I mean two is a good start really it is a good start it's not bad but once you start getting more like three or four you can't really go back you can't go back from four once you start using four monitors it is almost impossible to go for less and again I'm using six and I can manage with four which is okay I can manage it would be a hard trading day <laughs> I may miss some it in fact gonna cost me money I need to be seeing lot of information I need to understand where the markets coming from where the markets going I need to follow a lot of stocks and of course it also depends on your strategy on what you're doing so it's not just it, it also a little bit personal so again it may be changing uh, from a trader to trader okay I, I I currently moved to 24 inch but you know it's 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 23 is fine 22 is fine there's nothing wrong about that but you know they're getting cheaper and bigger so that's it I moved to four okay let's take a look at uh, five and seven and again I don't use seven anymore as I mentioned earlier that so that would be like uh, just five and my fifth monitor would be again as you can see here a lot of different charts so that that's going to be displaying 16 different charts 16 different charts now my just to remind you that's my laptop and the top um, monitor above my laptop connected to my laptop so this specifically would be showing 16 different charts which I'm following so the 16 different charts will be charts of stocks that are gapping up, gapping down, depending on my strategy, what I like to see and what I like to follow. Intraday things that I find, I don't, it, it's very rare that I occupy all of them. It's, it's quite rare. You can see that when I start trading, I usually... Uh, on the beginning of the trading day, if you were with me in the trading room, you, could, you, would, you would usually see me uh, displaying, I don't know, like maybe five or six different stocks that I'm following uh, that I would like to follow at this specific day. By the way, I had nothing I liked today, so I did not display anything. But on a regular good day, I would probably have anywhere between four to six different stocks that I'm following. So the rest will be used for other things that I'm just watching not really things that I'm let's call it in love with something I would kind of like to see but maybe something that will develop and of course when we're trading together and you come out with different stocks that I should be that you think I should be watching and I like to watch them then they will find their place to this to this chart uh, space over here so I would start my day by looking at my own picks and they will display probably this area over here I would usually use these ones for uh, gap downs the, the, these, these ones for gap up if I have more then all of these will be gap down all of this will be gap up so if I'll be looking for long I'll be watching on the right side if I'll be looking for shorts I'll be watching for the left side whatever suits you whatever suits you now since there's a lot of charts over here you could notice one very interesting part you don't see the volume you see there's no volume here and the reason you don't see the volume is because it takes space on the chart so I just eliminated the volume also eliminated um, uh, the choice between you know daily weekly and so on it's just intraday so since I'm using 16 different charts and the space is important 
therefore I eliminated again, eliminated again the, the, the volume and more. I'm just looking at the pattern. I want to for me, in my opinion, the way I work, I just want a one quick fast move in this whole 16 chart in order to understand if something's going on. Like I, I would every few minutes or even less than that, I would just move my head to the right side, take a quick look at uh, something that may be developing here. And for example, if I take a quick look right now at something that is developing here, that wouldn't take me more like, uh, I don't know, five seconds to find out something that I may like. For example, I like this one because it's downtrending. It's just getting close to the to the lows. Uh, maybe we could have a trade here right under the lows. I also like this one. Why? Because it's moving up. It's consolidating. You can see very clearly that there's some kind of... Uh, uh, breakout opportunity here if it moves over this uh, over this uh, resistance right over there uh, that could be a nice breakdown whatever I'm just taking a one quick fast look at uh, the chart and then when I see that there's something interesting going on I would just move back put it on a bigger chart start following the level to time and and everything get an idea if I want to be involved or not maybe I'll post it in the room maybe I'll just do nothing maybe i'll trade it maybe i won't so i'm i am watching it all through the day it's very very important for me to understand exactly what's going on there and uh, come out with my idea of uh, of a good trade depending on the quick setups that you see here now the last monitor would in fact be my my laptop monitor which is below this one and it's just one chart in fact and that's where I'm following my swing trades so that would be my swing account my swing trades I would be following that throughout the day and that's it so again that would be a very important monitor for me to follow my stocks just a reminder I had the same here so there's plenty of more space here again I don't touch this four on the left but the rest would probably be some kind of intraday uh, picks that I have, things, things that I really like. And when I am in a trade and I am um, trading, I, I, maybe I took a partial and I'm just following something that is uh, continuing throughout the day. So if I have different open trades, I would probably put them down here. So right in these four bottom charts throughout the day, when I start trading and I have a trade that is already moving and I only have, let's say, just the last 100 shares, it may be here or here or there. So I would probably use these ones as stocks that I am holding for now and just following it. Don't uh, use this very important, don't use this very important space for them because that's, again, where I would like to look for opportunities. Um... That's about it. If you have any questions about that, I would like to, I would be glad to answer. But again, main idea is to have everything in front of you, everything in a very, very clear way, everything so that you can easily move in between different stocks, put your stop orders, get into and out of uh, stocks very quickly, have the all information about them, level two, time and sale and everything. And again, very, very important. I can't see myself using less than six monitors. Really, I can't see myself doing that. I do sometimes manage to trade with four. And of course, when I have no choice and I'm with my laptop and I really, really have no choice, then fine. So I'm settling with just one small monitor. Usually that would be very, very hard. And I would definitely try to go to two. I connect another monitor to my laptop. Uh, that would probably be my minimum. Any questions about that? How do you follow the news related uh, on the stock that you're trading? Okay, with my platform, uh, with, with the same platform that some of you are using, the Colmex platform, you could open a you could open a window with uh, news, a news window. I don't use that. I know a lot of other people are looking for that. Personally, I don't look at that. I find it a little bit confusing. It's too much data coming in in the middle of the day. If I would trade through, throughout the whole day, 
I would probably use that. Since I'm only trading in the first one or one and a half hour, then I do not use that. If I would continue trading, some interesting news comes along throughout the day, and that would be something that uh, you would like to use, I guess. In my opinion, in the, in the first one or one and a half hours, I don't use that. So I do not watch the news. It's, a, it's, it's not something that I find very useful for me. And in fact, when I'm watching the news and or, or reading something about a stock, yes, you can definitely know that some stock is supposed to be moving intraday. However, if you know why, then it's a bit confusing. And what do I mean by that? You start convincing yourself that the news are good or bad and you suppose you, and, and you and you try to figure out what or convince yourself where would it where should it go like okay so it was good news it's supposed to go up maybe i'm supposed to go long now okay there's a pullback i'll get in right now but the problem is understanding the news doesn't mean the stock is going to go that way uh, you will see uh, the same number of stocks with good news coming down as a stock uh, with uh, uh, news that are bad news that are coming up. So it's very, very confusing. The stock do not always move according to the news. I mean, of course, when it's big, positive news, they will. But if you start reading the news, then you may have a problem with that. You may have a problem with that. So I don't follow the news. By the way, sometimes when I really want to know what's the news <laughs> in a in a company, I would ask in the room. I would I, I, one of you guys, there's hundreds of hundreds of traders in the training room, would probably know why and write it down. So that's my best news resource. Seriously, I'm not joking. How do I open 16 different uh, windows, uh, Edward? I'm just adding uh, more charts. Uh, let's do screen sharing, okay? Let's uh, screen sharing over here. So that would uh, look like that in my trading platform. I would just click on uh, trade. And uh, <laughs> last time I did that it was a long time. And chart, as you can see here. And then a new chart is being opened. Okay, now it opens quite big, but doesn't really matter. Then a new chart will be opened, and then you can configure it and so on. And you can, of course, uh, add different, like if you want to add time and sale or different things. So I hope that answered your question, if I understood you correctly. But you can definitely open on the same trading platform uh, plenty of uh, plenty different charts. And of course, you can uh, you can use your platform throughout the whole four screen. Just uh, spread it around four screen. You can use uh, windows which are in the win in the platform, outside the platform, and so on. You, you need to play with the platform a little bit in order to understand that. Uh, what do you mean by four different sessions of Colmex Open? I'm not sure I understand that, Edward. Uh, yes, um, just one or two monitor is not enough. I would expect you not only to mirror my trade, I would ex definitely expect you... Um, Pageman, I would definitely expect you to look for your own trades based on what you learn, based on maybe trades that you mirror. I would definitely expect you, other than just mirroring my trade, to start looking for trades that you develop yourself. And therefore, you need more monitors. If you have more monitors, you can look for more opportunities and learn more. The whole idea of the trading room is not just mirroring my trade. It's really learning, learning how to do it yourself. And the more monitors you will have, the easier it will become. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, Stefan, if you like to have your the S&P closer to your stock, that's okay. And again, you know, I'm just showing you the fact that I think you should be looking at uh, the S&P. And the thing is, just put the S&P wherever you like, really. I, I, by the way, myself, I use different type of uh, setups plenty of times. And in fact, the picture I just showed you would be maybe my previous version. The new version is a little bit different, but it's different now because I'm displaying my screens in the training room and so on, not really because the, the, the version I showed you was really without me using the training room even. Now I have a little bit space for the training room too and so on. But again, if it makes more sense and it helps you to have it closer, just, yeah, put it there. The, the exact location is not very important. What is important is that you will have a space for S&P 500, for example, for the SPY. How do I find a stock that is suddenly jumping or falling? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, uh, some traders use uh, intraday screeners. I personally don't do that, but you know, we are hundreds of traders in the trading room. What was it today that uh, suddenly jumped? Actually, the trade, the trade that I lost money in. What was it? Do you remember the symbol? Was it something like... GIS, right, exactly. Let's see what's what happened there. Really like to remember. So that was an intraday uh, quick mover. Yeah. Really? This one? Wow. Okay. Yeah, so all of a sudden made a big intraday move, then moved down, some kind of uh, news which were later turned out probably not to be right and then came down. So whatever, that was an intraday mover that we talked about in the trading room today and uh, one of the traders pointed out, I believe, and then we saw that, traded it, and in fact I lost money there. But whatever. Okay, so Pageman, what you're saying here is that uh, you realize that you're mirroring my trade and Scott. Uh, reading about uh, strategies, but honestly cannot really apply them now. Of course, you're just starting. I'm concerned that I'm not developing you. How, how long have you been trading? <laughs> Excuse me for laughing loud, seriously. I'm, I'm apologizing. Uh, listen. If if you would say if you would say two months, I would say just really seriously you're very new. Keep on. <laughs> so <laughs> let's talk in six months, okay? Ask this question again in six months from now. <laughs> seriously, uh, at this point, I'm actually surprised that you are, in fact, mirroring our trades. It is something that is being developed in a long, long time. I don't expect you to start trading your own stocks right now, even not in the next one or two months, seriously. At this time, you better mirror. You better understand what we're doing, try to understand what we're doing. Still, I'm, I'm absolutely sure that things are very, very uh, quick for you. Uh, whatever we do probably seems to you like, oh my God, it's so fast, I can't keep up with them. I don't understand much of what they're doing, and that would be totally normal. But after two weeks, absolutely. Now, it, take it takes time. It takes quite a long time to really understand what's going on, what trading is all about. 
Yes, you start by mirroring, but the whole idea is that you are getting exposed to different type of trading. You are getting exposed to different method systems. My systems are different than, um, than Scott, and then you'll see other traders in the room, uh, and you can, you can try and figure out what kind of system works better for you. Once you get the understanding, you will be starting to look for trades that are more likely um, interesting or probably things that you had some success rate, good success, good success with them, and then you would from there develop your own style. But developing your own style after a few me weeks or after a few months, almost impossible. It will probably take you something like six months to understand what you're supposed to be developing and then start working on them. So I wouldn't be surprised if you would keep on mirroring us for another few months. Seriously. If that sounds too much for you, sorry, but that's it. It takes time. Trading is not easy. Uh, what information on the windows time and sale and how can you use them correctly? Well Here's the time and sale, okay, and We're still open for three minutes. So if you're using GIS You can see it here. You can see that Here's the level two information buyers and sellers. Of course, these are the buyers. These are the sellers and the time and sell comes here. So every trade that is being, uh, every every stock that is being bought in the market, uh, you can see it's running here. Like one would be 100, two will be 200, zero will be less than 100. So again, that gives you quite a good information. Now you can set up the time and sell on different um, different colors. Like if a trade is being done over the ask, below the ask, inside, between the bid and the ask. It could have different colors. You need to set it up. And that is very, very imp important to know if there's a pressure of buyers, if there's a pressure of sellers, and so on. So I use time and sell in order to know the pressure of buyers, sellers, and the volume. If something goes on, then usually you will see the movement would become very very quick with a lot of volume and that would be very clear when you're watching the time and sale very important to use time and sale okay i'm reading your questions Uh, okay, so Fana asks, uh, when looking at trades during the trading session, what are you looking for? What makes you decide to go long or short? Okay, so when I'm looking at a stock moving through during the trading session, I'm looking for, in fact, patterns that I am familiar with. If I'm taking a look at different patterns, for example, if I'm taking a look at uh, GIS right now, what does it tell me? It tells me nothing. It tells me it's GIS not going anywhere. I'm not interested in that. But at the beginning of the trading day, I saw a very, very nice upside momentum. So I'm looking at that. I'm saying, oh, my God, if I could, for example, go long over here, that would probably be very interesting. And let's go long. Let's go short or whatever. So I am. And here's the bear market just closed. I am watching. I am watching a stock looking for intraday patterns that I'm familiar with. Every trader knows different patterns. Every trader is familiar with different patterns that he likes. And nothing wrong about looking at different patterns. My patterns are probably the ones that I had success with in the past. Uh, patterns that I believe that going to work out in a specific direction, long or short. So when I see something that is familiar to me, I would start examining. Probably I would go to the daily and take a look what happens weekly, maybe intraday and try to think whether I should go long, short, if at all. That's it.
So Jen asks, um, how do you overcome the fear? If you walk, when you're trading, open bell break, hot formation. Well, the fear is something that is in fact um, coming, it's, a, it's, a, it's an internal part of trading. You are always afraid, of course you are always, always, always afraid, but the fear is declining. The more you're trading, the fear declines. And the reason for that is in fact that you come to an understanding, of course when you're successful, that you will succeed in, let's say, more than 60%. My success rate is 68%. So I know that, okay, so I'll take the next 10 trades, probably in the next seven, in, in seven out of three, almost seven out of 10, I'm going to be successful. So yes, there's always fear, but reasonably, I know that most of the time I'm going to win. So if I'm taking patterns that I'm familiar with, and I'm understanding that losing is just a part of the game, and yes, it is a part of the game, then I know that I could have a loser and I will have to handle it, but the next trade is more likely to become a winner. So again, you, always, you are always afraid. You can never handle that, but if you know that, that statistics are with you, then you can overcome the fear. And I'm always afraid to lose money. The question is how afraid I am. And it, it's not the same like when I started. Now, it also has to do, of course, with your financial situation. I'm, I'm not the same financial situation when I was when I started. So losing $100 there or losing $500 now, it's easier for me to lose $500 now than it was back then losing $100. So that's... Uh, it increases the fear. So again, when you're just starting to trade, uh, it's about your financial situation. It's about uh, the fact that maybe you do not already have this 60% over success rate. And then, of course, the fear is something that you need to handle. Yeah, Hiro, you already trading for three and a half years and you're still learning. I'm still learning myself. I'm trading for 17 years. And whenever I take a look back at the last year, I'm always improving. I am in fact thinking right now that I'm so much better than I was last year. Seriously, I am. I know that. And I thought the same last year about the year, about the previous year. And I don't, I don't know if it's going to stop anytime. I think when it's going to stop, I'm probably not going to continue trading. But certainly, looking back, every year I'm improving. Every year. And of course, when I was trading uh, for maybe two or three years, I would probably look, okay, I'm much better this month than I was last month. Everything was much more clear in terms of month and then in terms of quarters and then in terms of years. So I can definitely tell you that I'm much better than I was last year, which is always very interesting. If I'm Robert, ask if I'm able to use uh, to use to watch the level two and time itself for more than just one stock. You know, it, it depends. Now, if I'm trading a stock right now, I would definitely be focused on the level two and time itself. But if I'm just watching a pattern on another stock and I'm trying to figure out whether I'm going to move in or or not then I would not be as concentrated as I am on the stock that I'm trading. That is before a partial, after a partial. I could definitely say that uh, I could watch clearly and in a good way two stocks at a time. I can, at the same time, if I would be trading two stocks, two level twos, two time and sell, two charts, without taking a partial, which means at the beginning of the trading with two different stocks, I can definitely trade well two stocks 
at the same time. Trying to move to three or more than that, sometimes I found myself trading for very rare occasions, very, very, very rare occasions. I would trade four at the same time, even possibly without the time and sell. That would be very, very hard, and I would need to be lucky. I would only do that if I have some perfect formations where I'm, I just have to trade more than two. But trading two, watching two level twos, time and sell, Yes, that would work fine for me. Of course, it would be better with one. Uh, yes, Pageman, I'm using market orders more than I'm using limit orders. And the reason I do that is because I'm trading CFDs. Now, in CFDs, you don't have any slippage. So, again, when I'm looking back at my history, when I was trading more stocks than CFDs, then... The stocks, when you trade stocks, you almost always have to use a limit order. When you trade CFDs and you have no slippage, you can definitely use it uh, at the market order. So I would definitely rather use a market order. It will be quicker and, and I would just, you know, I would get easier in and out stocks and so on. It's very important to be fast as a trader. Uh, Matteo, you just opened an account with Comex, okay. What do you think about the account manager? You mean the platform's account manager? That is, that the platform Comex offers us? Or you're talking about the person? I think you're talking probably about the person. Okay, yeah, I, I guess you're talking about the person. Okay, that, that depends. There are several account managers. I, I know them all, by the way, and or at least some of them. Some of them are very good. Some of them are just, you know, could give you the basic idea and really help you, but only when you're starting. With some, you could go farther than that, much farther than that. So an account manager, it's not a person you're supposed to be you're supposed to be learning from. An account manager should help you setting up the platform, should help you with basic trading ideas, should help you with basic information. Not supposed to be help you really moving forward much more than the first, I don't know, one, two months. And then you should be on your own. They can always help you with some questions, with answers to some questions, but really, you need to develop your own uh, understanding and they can only take you that far, not very far. But some of them really are very good. You will have to, depends who you're working with, you will have to come out with, uh, you will have to come out with understanding if he, if he can really continue on helping you. Usually it's not the case. Usually a few months ahead, you would need to go by yourself. Why did I short cake today? It's 62.40. Well, I can't remember. That was a great trade, by the way. Um, when did I do that, by the way? <laughs> Let me move to one minute candles. Because the decision was made by one minute candles. And... Where was that? I think it was here. Something like that. What was the price? 62.40, you say? Yeah, makes sense. Right over here, the reversal point. So, again, hold on a second. So, cake is down almost 8% down almost 8%, Do, does exactly what I like to see, moving up at the beginning of the trading day, then coming down. So stocks that are down 8% usually continue moving down. 
institutional traders are not touching them they will not buy today usually in the beginning of the day they go up because a lot of people like to average down their losses several reasons again I'm not getting into all of the reasons but then you look for reversal and it's very very likely that the reversal will work meaning the stock price will go down and this one really did uh, we were at the point where we were up uh, more than two points here and that really triggered well so again my strategy about trading gap downs is look for stock that's gapping down more than three percent so okay we've got one here that is gapping down almost eight percent gaps down look for the stock to move up it not necessarily should start with moving up but it did so look for the store look for a move up into the gap and a failure when the failure comes usually it will continue moving lower so look at the reversal over here 60 to 40 and it came down so that was a lovely trade based on my really basic strategy which again if you are with me on the star trader course then i would probably be teaching that for two hours when the part two of the markets whisper coming i'm actually working now started working recently shani on on a new approved version but it's not going to be uh, changed that much i need to find time to write a new book i have plans but this one took me almost four years to write so you're probably going to grow old with me until you see this, the next one glad you like it i looked uh, today at uh, at, um, at the book at Amazon. It's very strange, by the way. I, it's uh, Clifton, in fact, showed it to me. Um, he sent me a link. For some reason, Amazon decided to uh, to move the price up from $17 to, what was it, Clifton? $120-something dollars? <laughs> Must be a mistake. I don't know. Right now, it costs, <laughs> it costs something like $120, whatever reason. Does algo trading have an impact on market uh, today? Um, and does it affect your strategy? Uh, well, uh, Zem, yes. Uh, algo trading does affect the strategies, but not only on my strategy, but all of our strategies and for the and for good and, and for good. So in fact, you can trust computers more than you can trust men. So I wouldn't trust a person who sits in front of the computers and go and, you know, for example, algos would trade, take a stock that has a trend and will continue the trend. So if you will have an algo and you will want to develop some kind of an algo that says, okay, go long with the stock, whatever, then the algo would go probably long with the trend and keep on going long until the point where it decides to stop. So it will give... A better validity for the trade therefore the more algos you have the more reliable the market becomes and then again you could get into very specific details and look for stocks that are more um, that are that more algos are trading them uh, like there's different well, that, that that would in fact need me to get into a very specific, uh, very specific uh, ideas about how, how algos work. I used to have a team that was years ago. I used to have a team of uh, just a small team. Three people were in this in this team. They used to trade my money, and they were looking for stocks that are being that are being. Uh, influenced by algo trading in a specific way so we knew some algos would work in a very specific way and we would we were looking for stocks that were traded in this specific way and we knew how to do xyz okay and i'm not getting into details it was by the way very interesting so we knew how to do that uh, we knew what to look for. We knew what algos are going to be looking for. We found the stocks that the algos were following. And then 
Uh, in fact, because we knew how the algos were working, we went against them, really. So in fact, in this case, we went against the algos and tricked them because we knew that they were looking for this and that. You know what to expect. You know what they expect. You trick them in a way and they do something uh, which you can expect them to do and then you make money out of tricking them. And then there was like a cat and mouse uh, game there where uh, the operator of the algo would say, okay, somebody's tricking me here. And then they will look for a different stock. And then we would look for a different stock too to see where the algo operators would move to. It was a very, very interesting uh, game that uh, lasted uh, almost one year. And we were doing fine. We were making, I was splitting in some way the profit between myself and these uh, three guys. And again, they were trading my money. And then it took them a year to make enough money and open their own accounts. So <laughs> they went private. And then I stopped it. And that's it. But it was very, very interesting. So yes, when you have, when you have uh, algo trading, you have rules. When you have rules, then you know what to expect. And it helps your strategy. It does not go against. It helps your strategy. Uh, if you have a demo account, it stopped uh, working. Um, Zilvinas, uh, just uh, talk to your account manager. I guess they can open that. Just talk to them. Do I put uh, actual stop order in my position? Or just watch them and have my stop money. Yes, I, I, I have uh, what is called a mental stop loss. So most of the time I would use a mental stop loss. I'm not a believer in hard stops. Hard stops in the system are very dangerous. Usually it's very, very simple for, I mean, it will happen if you, a lot, it will happen a lot, quite a lot of times when you put a hard stop in the system and it will just be thrown out and then the stock will go your way because quick moves in the market would take you out and I don't want to be there. I do, however, recommend using hard stop for new traders. So if you're a new trader, probably should be using hard stop and that is for mental reasons. When you know that you have a hard stop, you're a better trader and that is good in the first, I don't know, six months. Then once you grow over this, you will see and understand that putting hard stops in the system is not a good idea and you should probably using what I call, what we call as traders, mental stops. And when you have a mental stop, it would probably work better for you. I know I'm tra taking some trades myself here in the trading room. I would sometime wait until the point where I would come out with a, with a, with with a winning trade and there would probably some be some traders who had a very clear hard stop in the same stock that I was trading. I would finish on the green side, they would finish on the red side. That's mostly due to hard stops. But again, not a good idea at the beginning. The account manager in your economics platform, your trades separately. Why does is a man no. I, I've, I, I'm not sure I understand your question, Tyler. If you can rephrase it. Uh, Akil Khan asks, uh, do you start your entry by entering full and then taking your partial or do you enter half position and average up in case uh, it goes okay, basically. Well, that, that depends, really depends. Okay, that, that really depends on the strategy. I'm not against what you're suggesting here, starting with let's say half size and then adding. That's absolutely okay, depending on different strategies. I'm, this, this is not my way. No, I don't do that. 
I do, however, add two winner. I think I had one today. I think, in fact, cake was something that I added to. I'm not sure. There was one trade today that worked out fine that I added to. So, yes, I do add two winners, not two losers, of course, not two losers. So I build up sometimes a bigger position. That would, in fact, be very rare. I really, really need to. I really need to understand that this trade is, in my opinion, a wonderful trade. So when I come to the point where I'm adding, that is because I really trust uh, the stock that I'm trading, and that is quite rare. I don't think it happens. You won't see me doing that much in the room, maybe once every few weeks. That would be quite rare. Uh, Voodoo ask, um, do you recommend having stop and reorders at technical levels? At a technical entry, stop entry on light today. Stop entry, okay, I see. That's 5 cents above 58. But when you get filled, you get filled at 58.60. So you, you used if you use a stop if you use a stop order to move in voodoo, I know what you're talking about. If you use a stop order to move into a trade, please, please, please use a stop limit order. Don't use a regular stop order because a regular stop order is a stop market order. Sometimes a big move like that, like in, the, in what you're describing here, could really give you a very a, a very bad execution. So you, when you use stop orders to move into a trade, always, always use a stop limit order only. Uh, Fana, you advise us to look at bid ask price, not chat before you are out of trade. I'm not. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand. Please rephrase that. Uh, no, I do not use uh, trailing stops. I do not use trailing stop. I don't believe, I, I don't personally believe in trailing stop, if that's your question, Pageman. I don't. Trailing stop, in my opinion, has nothing to do with reality. It's like a certain, I don't know, 30 cents below, but then you could definitely have a lot of intraday support and resistance. Now, of course, if you're walking away from your computer, Yes, you can use trailing stop, but intraday when you're using, when you're watching the trade, I do not recommend you to do that. Guys, I'm, I, I may have missed some of your questions. I'm sorry for that. It's not because I didn't want to answer. It's because I really missed, may have missed some. So if I missed anything, again, please write it again, because... It was not intentional. Oh, uh, so Fana meant level two data and chart. Yes, I definitely watch both, but let me go, go back to that. You advise us to look at bid and ask price, not chart. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, definitely use both. You you need to use the chart and the level two, but the minute I click the button, I would look more at the level two. The level two is more important for me than the chart, but I would definitely use both of them. The level two would show me immediately where the sellers and 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 where the buyers and sellers coming from and what they are planning. So if I'm going to see the sellers moving down or the buyers moving up 
even before there was a trade, I'm going to be seeing that on the level two. And again, let's take a look at, uh, of course, it's not training time here right now, but if I'm watching the level two here and all of a sudden I'm, I'm seeing the buyers moving up a few cents, that doesn't mean there was a trade. So I could be looking at the, I could be looking at the time and sale and see nothing. And of course, not only the time and sale, I'll be looking at the chart and see nothing. So there wasn't any trade yet, but the buyers moved up, the sellers moved up, so it's probably going to come out real soon. The next trade is going to be seen on the chart. So in fact, the first move, sometimes, not all the time, will be here at the level two. You get quicker information and more reliable information here. Now, of course, it, it could also be that the buyers moved up here, the sellers moved up here, so probably the price is coming up, and then they would come down, and the sellers would come down, and there wasn't any trade executed, but it's not very likely. With a stock with a lot of volume, for example, this one, 5 million shares, then if the buyers would move up, the sellers would move up, it's probably going to come, even the next trade is probably going to come at a higher price, even though the chart didn't show it yet. So again, you get pre-warning when you watch the level two. So yes, level two, in my opinion, is more important, is more important. Uh, Tyler, in Kronk's platform, your account manager shows the P&L of your trades separately, right? Also collectively. Does this mean that this have to do with different with difference in platform? Was there option for this? No, you can do it yourself. I'm not sure. Again. Uh, if you use your account manager then you can you can you can set it up in different ways i'm not going to do it right now but uh, you, you you're if you're using the same platform i do it's it should show the same just watch one of my videos and try to set it up that the same way it does show everything Robert asks, when you are trying to exit long position, do you hit the bid using the limit order, reverse for short trade, do you try to anticipate the final upward movement and set a limit on the ask for long? Hmm. Okay. Like, like when I'm long, for example, if I'm trying to, okay, yes, you, you, you want, okay, so if I'm long, I would not hit the bid over here. I would probably beat the hit a little bit before that. I mean, of course, we're not in trading hours right now, and that there's a big difference in prices. But if I'm long, for example, and, if, and when I want to get out with a limit order, I would click that price over here, and that would show on my limit. And oh, hold on a second, sorry, don't see that. I think, okay, again, I would click the price here, and that would turn into a limit order. And this limit price would show right here because I click that. Watch if I click 1601, it's going to show right over here, okay? When I click 55, then it shows right over here. So I would not click the first. Uh, the highest uh, bid, I would probably click a few cents below and then move out, okay? Now again, when I'm trading CFDs, there's no slippage, so it works great. If I would be trading real regular stocks, I may be clicking on this price or two cents below that and then moving out. So if I'm long, I would use a very a smaller limit order. Or in CVDs, of course, use just market orders. Do you try to anticipate the final upward move and set the limit order to ask for? No, I don't do that. Like, for example, if I'm long and I 
don't set up a limit order. For example, if I'm expecting uh, here, let's use this example. If I'm using, if I'm expecting uh, cake to move out from 62 to 6250, let's say that's what I'm expecting. I would not use a limit order to sell at uh, 6250 and set it up in the platform. I would wait for it to come to 6250, and then I would start trailing it, meaning I would give it a chance to move a little bit higher than 6250, and then for every small pullback, I would move out. Sometimes I would gain, I, I could gain another point if it continues moving higher, but of course, being realistic, you gain a little bit more than just your anticipated target. So no, I would not use limit order in order to move out of a trade like that. I would definitely give it a chance to move higher. And in most cases, that would give you better income. Um, Voodoo, you'll have to write your question again, sorry. You know what, let me look for your question. Uh, uh, thank you, Mohammed. glad you liked it. What time frames I'm using for a single ticker? Make your decision. You know, it depends on the strategy, depending on what I'm, what strategy I'm using. Usually at the beginning of the trading day, I'm trading gaps, so I would be using one minute candles, but then I would probably change to five minute candles after 30 minutes or so. Ooh, about uh, stop orders. I mentioned earlier Voodoo and that was a little bit longer explanation, but uh, I don't use hard stops. I use I use mental stops, and mental stops works much better for experienced traders. Or for entry, I recommend having st oh stop entry. Oh, that oh right right that was a different question. No, always use stop limit orders. De don't ever use stop market orders. The reason you got a bad fail was the fact that you were using stop market orders. We always learn never to use them. And here Clinton comes again with a video that uh, shows you how to use stop limit orders. So really, seriously, don't use that. When you set up, you know, automated orders to go long or to go short. Uh, yeah, the, the scan I use is my really the standard Colmex top 20. So 90% of my trades would come from from here. Like uh, cake, for example, would be somewhere in the probably somewhere over here. Look for it. I don't know where it is right now. Here it is, cake. So cake is one of the movers today. I saw it uh, an hour before the trading started. I was actually watching that, and so everything was there. Actually, I, I don't think I found cake myself. Some other person in the trading room pointed that out. Okay, traders, um, that's it for me today. I hope it was um, a good experience for you. Uh, hope I answered uh, your question. Okay, I kill just one last question. Let's see. Your mental stops are based on technical levels, loss dollars, percentage and started dollar well, all of the above. So it depends. It certainly I do watch technical levels, top loss in dollars or percentage only on only on swing trades, never inter never intraday. No, never intraday. But on intraday basis it's not only technical levels. So it's technical levels, but you take a look at the chart and you also come to realize where stock is overextended and different other things. You know what? It all, again, goes back to technical. So maybe the answer really is technical levels. Okay. Um, 
have a great uh, night if you're at my time zone it's almost midnight and oh, have a great afternoon <laughs> so thank you for being here today and see you all tomorrow in the training room Traders, I would love to hear your thoughts regarding this video, so let's have a discussion in the comments below. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, just go ahead and click subscribe. And if you like to learn trading, trade live with me and get a funded account without risking your money, click right over here in order to learn more about my funded accounts program.